Today, I'm gonna to be showing you three one-pot meals that are restaurant quality. Oh yes, look at this. This is just comfort food at its finest. Velvety, that sauce is coated beautifully on each piece of pasta. Crazy texture actually, look at that. That's a one pot meal. Everything you need is in there. Everyone can just tuck into this, put it in the middle of the table, and just dig in. Mmm. So the first one pot meal that we're gonna be making is this lovely creamy pan roasted mushroom garlic and leek potato pie. It's so simple to make, it's so tasty, it's warming, hearty and delicious, but it doesn't take too long to make as well. So first of all, what we're gonna do, it's important with simple dishes is to cook each element properly. So with my mushrooms, I'm actually gonna cook them first, get them super golden in my cast iron pan, pressing them, stirring them until they're lovely and caramelized and then I'll add the rest of the ingredients. You can use whatever mushrooms you can get your hands on. I just use a couple of punnets of wild mixed mushrooms from the supermarket. Yeah, this is the color we want now. Look at that lovely bit of caramelization. Or as you Americans say, caramelization. So the reason I'm getting the mushrooms cooking first rather than putting them in after the leek and the garlic it's because they'll probably stew down if I did that. I want them to get all that surface area on the bottom of the pan and get lovely and golden, adding more flavor to the dish in the long run. Yes, now that the leek's cooked down, I'm gonna add some dried herbs and spices. We've got some dried tarragon, some dried chili flakes, a bay leaf, and some ground nutmeg. And I've got my new baby oh. microplane, look at that. That is cute, isn't it? Look. This is the one she tells you not to worry about versus you. Should we make this extra special? Uh, this is just an optional thing. If you're doing this on the weekend rather than an evening meal, I recommend it. Adding a splash or a shot of brandy to this dish will add the most beautiful fragrance to the creamy sauce. You can smell the sweetness already. What you want to do is let that alcohol cook off for a few minutes and then what I'm going to do is stir in some plain flour and that's going to help thicken the sauce and make it creamy. Stir in the flour and cook it out for a couple of minutes before deglazing the pan with some vegetable stock. See how that's thickened up already? I'm now going to stir in some oat cream and a little bit of lemon juice to help enhance the flavours. So lemon acts like salt does and brings out flavours, enhances flavours, so that's why I'm adding it at this stage. And now all we have to do is make our topping. So what I'm going to do is finely slice some potato. I'm going to use a mandolin, but if you haven't got a mandolin, just use a knife. And then just spread them on top of this in a neat pattern. The good thing about slicing your potatoes really fine is that they're almost going to be like chips on top. So I'm just going to lay these around neatly. Shouldn't take longer than one minute to do this. Drizzle over some olive oil and get it into the oven. The temptation to do salt bay is just always there. And pepper. Now, let's get this into the oven, preheated at 180 degrees. Let's get this bad boy out. And it smells so good. Oh yes, look at this. Let's dig into this. Oh, yes. This is just comfort food at its finest. All in one pot as well. Oh my God, that smells so good. Oh, I'm looking forward to this. Just get some of this, bit of everything. Mm. The potatoes just melt into it and they've gone a little chewy and sticky and the top layer though is crispy. Because we cooked the mushrooms first, they've gone kind of meaty and succulent and the chili in that, a little kick at the end is beautiful, works well with the tarragon. Mm. It gets better guys because we've got two more one pot meals coming up. The next one is so simple, anyone could literally do this and it's just as tasty. So let's get straight into it. 
So dish number two, I'm just combining some of my favorite flavors to make a beautiful, simple one pot pasta dish. That's right, you don't actually need to cook your pasta separately in this. So first up, I'm gonna say sorry Italian friends, this isn't traditional, but it's gonna taste lovely. And actually cooking the pasta within the dish is actually gonna help thicken the sauce, make it lovely and creamy almost. I've said creamy too many times today. But anyway, first up what we're gonna do is get an onion chopped with some fennel and some garlic, really fine. Fennel is one of my favorite ingredients. It's underrated, but cooked in pasta, that subtle aniseedy flavor is delicious. So just like the first one pot meal that we made, take some time guys, there's no rush. Because if I cook this for a little bit longer, it's gonna release sweetness and then it's gonna make the dish even better. Invest a little bit more care in it, it's gonna taste like a restaurant quality meal, even though it's made in one pot. So now we're gonna add some butter beans, eight grams of protein per 100 grams of butter beans. So these are a good source of protein and other vitamins and minerals. I like to add them to pastas and stews and things like that. What I'm gonna do is add half now and crush them with a fork and that's gonna add more of a creaminess to this sauce and then we'll add the rest whole. We're nearly there with this and just to remind you that all of the written recipes are on my website as per usual. So click the link below and you'll get the full written recipe with all the measurements. Into the pan now I'm gonna add some capers. I'm gonna add some miso paste and some dried mushrooms. So now I'm gonna deglaze the pan with some white wine. The alcohol will be cooked off, but if you prefer not to use alcohol, just use some extra vegetable stock. So I'm gonna add some vegetable stock in after anyway. Plus I'm gonna add the zest and juice of one lemon. Now this next ingredient is a little bit strange, but just trust me on this one. This is giving me kind of seafood pasta vibes with the lemon, the capers. So I'm actually gonna add some nori, so seaweed basically. It's not something that I'm gonna chop fine, I'm just gonna chuck it in in chunks like this and I can take them out after. But this is gonna add this little taste of the sea flavor which will be beautiful in this dish. All right, we're gonna add some vegetable stock now and then I'll add my pasta. I'm gonna be using some conchiglie pasta shells but you can use whatever pasta you have in your cupboard. Break some lasagna sheets into it if you want to. So we're gonna get the lid on and let it bubble away for about eight to 10 minutes. Let's look at this pasta. Oh, that smells good. I'm just gonna stir through some freshly chopped parsley and then serve it up with some pumpkin seeds and a few sun-dried tomatoes. That's all you need, this will be beautiful. Because the pasta has been cooked in that sauce, it's almost become like velvety, that sauce and it's coated beautifully on each piece of pasta. That nori in fact is actually just broken down and melted into the sauce nicely, so you don't need to take it out. And also what I would say is stir things like kale or spinach through this as well. A couple of sun-dried tomatoes on the side. So let's give this a taste. Mmm. The pasta shells have each got a little bit of everything with inside the shell, which is really nice. The butter beans are smooth and creamy. The pasta's al dente perfectly cooked. This is such a simple meal with store cupboard ingredients and it tastes restaurant quality. Mmm. Whoa, 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 whoa. Before we carry on with the recipes, guys, you must subscribe, otherwise we can't keep making these videos. So please subscribe, it means the world. Thank you. And I caught your attention then, didn't I? The third and final one pot meal is gonna be a delicious chili, but we're gonna pimp this out a little bit. We're gonna be using jackfruit, and I'm gonna show you how to prepare jackfruit properly so that it is actually meaty, because that gets thrown around all the time, but it's never actually meaty, so they don't prepare it from a can properly. Plus, we're gonna add two special secret ingredients that will take this to the next level that you may think are kind of weird, but I'll show you at the end. Let's get straight into it. First up, what we need to do is finally chop up an onion. How many onions have I chopped in my lifetime, eh? some garlic and a jalapeno. Get them sauteing in my saucepan. Meanwhile, we'll prepare that jackfruit. Prepare, prepare, prepare. So 
So you want to get some young jackfruit in cans, in, in water. If you're familiar to plant-based cooking, you would have seen this before. Nowadays it's sold at all good supermarkets. Just drain the water away and then you want to grab yourself a clean kitchen cloth and put the jackfruit in the center of it. Then pick up the edges and wring it out, baby. Wring it out. Get rid of all, look at all that liquid. This is what people leave behind when they usually prepare, prepare jackfruit from a can and it's all mushy and crap. It's not meaty at all. Squeeze this out and it'll become meaty. Get them biceps going. Now we open it up and you'll see that this now has a very crazy texture actually. Look at that, all very tender. All right, so now we get this into the pan with the onions. Then we're gonna add some spices. I'm gonna add some ground cumin, ground coriander, cayenne pepper, sweet smoked paprika, some dried oregano, and a cinnamon stick. So just make sure all the jackfruit is nicely coated now and let those spices cook out for um, about a minute or so. Then I'm gonna add some chopped sweet potato and some red kidney beans. Before I deglaze the pan with some lovely vegetable stock and a can of chopped tomatoes, I'm gonna to stir through some tomato puree and some soy sauce for that umami rich flavor. Don't forget, like I did, to season with salt and pepper. Call me crazy. Call me crazy. Call me crazy. You're crazy. Oh, I know. But the ingredient that I'm gonna to add to this, <laughs> is that funny or not? Call me crazy. Crazy. But an ingredient that I wanna to add to this to give some real smoky notes, some rich notes. Because after all, we're not cooking with meat, so we need something punchy. I don't really know how to describe it other than rich and powerful. I'm actually gonna add a splash of coffee. Trust me on this one. At the end, I'm also gonna stir through some dark chocolate too. But this coffee, just a splash of it will help add this richness that I'm after. Now just let the chili bubble away for at least 20 minutes and then I've got another thing up my sleeve. Not the chocolate, something even better to do with this chili just before serving. You'll love it. Yes, this chili is coming together now, but of course we've got to add the extra special dark chocolate. Stir this through, it's gonna add this amazing richness and luxuriousness to the dish. Guys, don't use Freddo's or Dairy Milks or something like that. Get some good quality dark chocolate and that's what you want in this. Look at this now, look at it transform the chili. As I said, I got one more thing up my sleeves for this. I haven't got any sleeves on today, but we are going to do something special. Obviously this is a one pot meal, which means if we toasted tortillas in another pan, that means I failed the task and the mission. What I'm gonna do is get my tortillas, I'm gonna stuff them with some cheese, some grated cheese, fold them up, get them on top, and then put them in the oven so they go lovely and crisp and golden. And we're gonna get it on top. Before I get it on top, I'm gonna take that cinnamon stick out. Just put that there, stick them in. Almost like mini quesadillas on top of the chili. One more on top, then into the oven for about 10 minutes. Whilst the chili's in the oven, finally chop up some spring onions, also known as scallions in America. There's my garnishes. Let's get that bad boy out the oven. Oh yes, here we go, look at that. Lovely, lovely stuff. Nice crispy bit of tortilla. Let's get some uh, garnishes on top. We've got avocado, the sour cream, spring onions, bit of lime. Everyone can just tuck into this, put it in the middle of the table, and just dig in. That's a one pot meal. Everything you need is in there, voila. Get that on there. Mm. Mm. Smoky, tangy, a little chili spice. That is delicious. And the jackfruit is so tender. And I love this little tortilla idea. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed those one pot meals. Some interesting ideas, 
Stay tuned for more recipe videos coming up. Just click that subscribe and the notification bell so you're alerted when we post a new video. And don't forget, signed copies of my cookbooks are on my website. Click the link below. We'll send them wherever you are around the world. My lovely mum sends them out. Thanks for the support. See you soon.